right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the cloud room. No. Uh, to the web room, sorry. Um, yeah, let's move that on the first slide. <laughs> um, yeah, so the, the whole web track is going to be in this room today, so that you're into just, you know, stay here, sit here, don't get up, you will miss open anything. Um, we will have three talks until 12.45, then we'll have lunch. And our very first talk is Sebastian Stiel, who's talking about cutting edge web applications. Um, so without further ado, go ahead. Okay, thank you. This year, as a dynamic front end expert in, in this company, and yeah, I want to talk about cutting edge web applications. And first, uh, as we all mentioned or recognized that the web was transforming a little bit more from static web pages um, to some um, new kind of applications which we all use every day. Are we web application, it's not a, a single page, it's it's like a whole software but this is running in your browser and, and your browser becomes more and more the operating system of the web. And you have the shiny applications where you can um, do different stuff with, like, like in the Google Mail uh, applications, you can check your mails and manage them, or Facebook, we all know this, uh, the social uh, network and I want to talk about or give you a brief uh, information how such pages such heavy um, browser heavy uh, applications which would run really in the front end um, you to um, create and how you would develop them and how you put them on the server and bring it to your users okay but before, uh, before we go ahead and look what's, what's the actual stuff. We go step and, and take a look in the, in the past. In the past uh, we have a very huge uh, application layer, a techno technology layer. Um, the most pages uses heavy um, languages like Java and there we started mostly with an HTML page board, which was generated from a um, template. This was delivered to you from a controller, which run mostly behind the service, which talks to that middleware, and this does an object relation mapping to a database. So if you want to put new content to the user and you adapt your database, you have uh, adapt the whole stack. It was really huge work. And so we figure now out in the next, next pages um, how we can uh, get a little bit faster. The two main parts um, are the browser and the server. They are communicating to each other. First, uh, I want to, to show you what is running into the browser in this new um, single Applica page applications and in the next step we will talk about the server and what we need to put there to make that all work together. Mostly the, the, the new applications which we are seeing on the internet are single page applications, so called SPAs. They mostly contain of, of, of uh, CSS file which is um, contains other files which were all bundled together and shipped to the browser. Same thing in the JavaScript sections. You mostly get one JavaScript file where all is bundled up together. These are the JavaScript uh, libraries, the frameworks, and the modules, the code what you write. And there are also content which will be a lot of delayed, but it's uh, mostly additional modules which are built up on, on your frameworks and your libraries. Then you have in, in your browser also uh, HTML templates, mostly um, 
and you need them to, to show the user um, the information you want. And there are also mostly templates uh, laying in the delayed location on your server and, and you do it <coughs> get later. Advantage of, of such a single page, page application is um, they really improve the usability because um, it all runs in, a, in one browser session instance and you have really quick information about the user how it, when if he clicks on a button you can really respond instantly to, to this click and you don't need a round trip back to the server um, evaluate his information and then bring it back you can do it all in this real one on this window another advantage is um, that you do your log, log performance distribution about all user. So in the past application, we would render all, all HTML on the server, and if the user requested, we would ship it to the front end. In this application, in the single page applications, we mostly render this part in the browser, and so we have not so heavy logs on the server side. The, the log is on the user side, and he gets performance for it. So we can shut down servers, servers, and distribute the application to to the users, and they run it in their environment. Also, has less data traffic. So, um, for for example, if you are shipping um, a whole all page to the user, and and he clicks on the next page button. You don't need to, to fetch the whole data again. You only need to, to pick up some parts of the page you want to see, which are renewing, like the body, and the header and the footer are mostly the same on the other pages. So you only need to load the contents. It also has a <coughs> that means you are, if you are on a mobile application and your wire gets lost, you can still touch on, on buttons and, and the application can respond to it because it runs into your browser. And then the application can, can uh, inform you about that and, and say, okay, you can do this now, but you can do other stuff. Also has disadvantages. Um, it's a security issue. That's because um, all your source code which you are writing, you are putting into the browser and it's visible to the to the user. And hacker and other stuff like hacking kids or something um, can access this data or see this data, how it, it works together, how the source code works, and they can find some codes inside your code and, and use it for them. Another disadvantage is browser caching. So if you ship your whole application to the user and it runs only in the browser. So um, you have to, to make sure if you update your CSS file on the server that he gets informed and that he loads this file again. I heard about um, people who opened their browser window and didn't close their computer and have a, this, this one instance of application open for, for one month or so. And if in this time you change your Google <coughs> application to server side, you want to inform this window. You also have therefore memory leaks, because if you have opened this window the whole time and you are fetching data the whole time, your memory stack will rise. And there's also a search engine optimization issue that caused the single application lives in one window. And crawler, like uh, the one from, from Google, doesn't um, know about JavaScript really. Um, he doesn't interpret it because you want to fetch, really fetch um, your page instantly and um, want this in a high performance. And therefore, you have to render your page on the server for each CEO, for each crawler request. There are solutions for that, but mostly. We have to fight with this. Um, it's an overview of uh, loading data could work. So here, if you um, 
in page, for example, and into your browser loaded, it's page A, and you want to go to page B, you don't <coughs> do need to reload this header or this footer or the outside information, you only need to fill your template of page B, and therefore you have to go to the server <coughs> and the data service to get this information what you need for the template and not the whole page. For single page application or other applications, there are known libraries. They are still valid and they are heavily used by the users. Um, there are healthy libraries like, like underscore.js, which provides you functionality like uh, mapping, arrays, or uh, do your data transform into another type. There are libraries uh, to, for structuring your code, like a Backbone.js, where they give you uh, a structure where you can uh, make your, your own modules and, and own components, and the framework really gives you, uh, it, it does structure your code. And there also are the shortcut libraries, which I query, I think you all know this library and we can use it again. But to make this whole work, the things work as in page application mostly you need more than a library. You really need a whole framework with like, which does care about the whole user stuff, the, the inputs, the outputs. And so there are three, three uh, big players right now. It's AngularJS uh, by Google, not uh, by Microsoft. And Amber now the has now um, become final version. It's thing. It's more a community level uh, framework. Um, but they all do really the same. They uh, provide you a framework to build a single page application. They do uh, mostly a separation of concerns. That, that means that if you have different things like uh, looking for user action and you have your, your application code, they really split it into different components and they wire it automatically together. They do also care about rendering. This is how um, you want to fill the templates which are in your page currently loaded. And they only also do care about routing. Routing is if the user clicks on the next page button, you want to show the next page, but what happens if you... Hello? Hello? <laughs> I'm no longer. Okay. Um, if you are on the next page and, uh, and you want to go back and you to press your browser back button, it also should work, and you want to go back to another <coughs> instance, you, you want to stay in this context of the single page application. So, this is routing where kicks in and takes responsible for it. And another um, great feature was um, is two way data binding. And therefore, I have a little example here. Um, as you mentioned, uh, your, um, no, I hadn't mentioned. This presentation also runs it in a browser, and this is also a single page application. So I have included here an AngularJS and this title. I can I can change it here instantly. So and two-way data binding means at this at this point that you can have a data object, and if you change it of over the application layer in, in your script code, it will update every every front end component which are using this. And you can do it the other way. If you update a front end component, it will simply update the back end, also which runs into your browser, this component, this data component. So you can do um, this stuff right now. Now we talked about um, how you build up this in your in your browser, and what information you then need, which libraries, and how they all fit together. Um, but I 
often miss the, the point or the way how, how this application you build uh, gets put on your server. Because this uh, also is a very important progress. And therefore, I want to, to um, introduce a um, deployment chain or show you how you can do it. You, you don't have to. But uh, it's often seen so that, that it's, this chain happens. So you start with your source files. You develop the application on localhost and everything runs good. So then after this, you check this in into a in versioning system. On this versioning system, this is in a continuous integration system for most of the time. And this system to can do a lot of steps for you. Here I, I want to go into uh, these three steps, build, test, deploy. And then the important shipping process to deploy puts your data to the server. Front of this, this, this little wire you should uh, represent the internet. I could do a, a cloud instead of this, but yeah. Only, uh, only this, this line. Um, the browser connects to a load balancer, which knows um, which kind of server he has to, to use, which is up and running and has the current um, stuff and is not overloaded. Um, but in first time, I want to show you this um, progress. First is the CI system. There are many CI systems out there. Um, they do really help you if you are not working alone. I should also use it if you're working alone. Um, but if you're working in a team, uh, it will give you a, a lot of transparency to what the others did. And um, did they break the code? Did they um, check in thousands of files? We have one little page, mostly the front end of this integration system, where you can check this information and, and read some stuff like reports. Building the web application. For a um, single page application, it's, it's common to, to build up your files, as I showed before, that you don't have uh, 20 requests to get all your JavaScript. You will uh, put it all together in one file and then make one bundle what you can put on the server. So it's easy to detect which version is it is deployed and um, you have different system versions and can compare them. Um, in a JavaScript uh, application, you would commonly use a grunt. Grunt is a, it's a module for Node.js. It's um, like other build systems like ARMS or Maven, you can um, define tasks which they can process afterwards. And you want to do mostly a, a compile of your code. There are some languages like uh, less CSS or, or CoffeeScript, JavaScript, uh, which you need to compile to, to, an, to another code. <coughs> um, the combining um, issue and after that, that has combined it in one file, you mostly want to compress it so that you only transfer the minimum of, of information what you really need. And after that, it can create an artifact or zip it or put it in RPM, what your um, infrastructure needs. Test the code, very important. The CI system should test the code. You should always write tests. And it's also very good if you develop test-driven. Uh, we mostly um, start with a um, code quality check. And this can be done by JSLint. It's a static file analyze tool. And it checks for common problems in your code. If you forget something, a bracket, or, or your code doesn't really um, do bad things, in the JavaScript, it's yeah, it's known not for only its good features. There are also very bad features inside. In JSLint, 
will warn you or break your build if you intrude it and say, oh, please don't, don't use evil, for example. After the, the code quality checking, um, you can run your tests. Um, he has split it up in, in three components. There are the unit tests, which really tests your single function or single unit in your code. Then the next step is mostly the end-to-end -end test. That in, involves not only your code snippet, it, only, um, uh, it also tests the HTML you want to put out to a user. So that's mostly the interaction between your code and the HTML. And then the integration tests. Integration tests are um, tests, they test your really um, live system. So this would um, start your server and start an, an, a new um, browser instance and access your application and it clicks on your buttons and tries to figure out if, if your application still works. A unit test mostly, um, I think, um, currently the most important framework is Jasmine to do this. End-to-end -end tests you can also do with Jasmine for um, Angular JS, for example. This is uh, included into the framework. There is a, a testing component. And integration tests, um, you, you all use Selenium. Selenium is um, automating tool which can um, you, you write it in, in Java and you can force it to open a browser and select <coughs> different stuff on, on your web page. It will does the user interaction with the browser on a programmatic way. Okay after this uh, we have all tests and all is green. Um, we have to deploy the app factory server. For that, we uh, first yeah, we, we stop the server, and if you have only one server, this is not a, a good idea. So you have to think back on the forward. You, you always want to have two servers, one live server, which is still up and running, and the second server where you can put your new stuff in, um, stop it, Put your new stuff in, start it, and then switch over to the next server. So do it after each step. So you, you run to a, a chain of deployment. On the server side, um, widespread now is, is most commonly Node.js. Node.js is a server side runtime uh, for, for JavaScript. It is a, yeah, you can say it's a command line tool to run scripts, but it also um, has a real great engine behind it. It's a Google V8 engine. It's, it's written in, in C++ and it's really fast. Um, currently, the, the Chrome browser uses this engine in the inside to show you the pages and to um, to run the JavaScript code. Um, and this, this Node.js um, has the ability to, to start an, an HTTP server for you. It's really a tiny code bit which you put into a JavaScript file, give it to this, this binary, this, this Node.js binary, and it will start up on, on, on your system and, and server, where you con can connect to and it can provide you information. Um, it's really fast on, on, on uh, network interaction. It's event driven and, and has a non blocking I.O. That means that if you are accessing an I.O. data, for example, if you want to read a file, you don't read the file and it blocks your whole application. No, it, you say read this file and you give it a callback and your application runs further. And if the file was read, then the callback gets called. So you can do other stuff in the background. Um, if, if the rest of the part is, is doing some other stuff.
So what we have now is a flat technology layer. We have in the front end the HTML to the CSS bundle and the JS bundle. And this part can really um, be huge now. There are all your domain logic and all the validation and stuff inside. You have a server which provides you this data. It's a, for example, the Node, Node.js server. And behind the server, mostly there's a data API. For example, if you want to, to show um, information from your Twitter account on, on your web page, you would call your server, hey, give me the Twitter information, and the server runs against uh, the Twitter API. I think this stuff can really um, be um, another application running somewhere in the network, and it only provides you data. It gives you, um, for example, JSON or XML information, and your server can, can give it to your front end. You don't need this whole um, stack behind that. The stack can, um, can live in, in the site, in this data API. That's, it can um, live on another server. Yeah, the last chapter is measure of your application. So after you have deployed your whole uh, single page application on your server and the user has, has loaded up in his browser, you don't really know uh, what's happening there because if there happened an, an exception in the browser, you don't know about this bit because it does not longer execute to your server. So for that, you, you need some measurement. This is the time um, I'm doing this stuff right now. <coughs> it's running in my single, single page application and then I can go back and forward and still running. And this is also done about the, the routing here um, side. I see here, it's the slide 20, slide 19. And if I use the browser back, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> should also work. <laughs> so the framework failed here. <laughs> we'll be studying again. No. Okay, what we can measure. <laughs> so that means you, you need to measure the, the back end and the front end uh, arrows separately. You have to collect them and report them back to your server. So you can record it on your server, or you write it down to a file or somehow, and, and then you can run some um, log file analyzing tool like Logstash and Bana, this is which, which we are using, and you have this uh, little diagrams and it says, oh, there is something strange happening. Watch the application. Um, Graphite is also a good tool uh, to where you can do this. Or you do it by your hand and use the, the shell command, grab, and grab your log file for errors. This is also the cheapest version. Performance. Yeah, you have also measure your performance because now your application runs in the browser. You have to figure out how well it performs on most of your users. You can do this with the browser dev tools like, like Chrome print. Thing brings it in if you're hitting some keys. You have there are always um, built-in development tools. And for example, in the network, you can analyze them and, and, and watch how long they take. Um, there are also uh, web pages to do this for you. So if you have a bug and don't want to attach screenshots, there's web page test org. Try to open. Yeah. This is a performance test I did for our homepage. And you see there are a lot of requests and some could take longer as you might to expect. And here you can figure out, okay, Google is slow, why? So you can create a bug and the team can figure out why it is slow. So you need to measure this. And the last one is run the screen user measurement. That means you not only measure your experience to your application, you measure the application which um, 
every single individual user has with your application. So that was um, would also work like like we did with the error tracking. We collect the information the browser provides, like load time, like performance, like memory usage, or bandwidth, and you report it back to your server. There you can co take a look at the logs and then see, oh, this page really does perform well or it does not. And if you are using this measure method, you really have the whole um, users out there in under and you watch with your users. It's not an NSA thing, it's, it's more yeah, like watching your application, how well they perform into the hand of the user. Um, the last thing you want to measure is success. So you have an application and you do something with it. You always want to know if the user likes it. If he does use it, if he come, does he come back? Does, does he tell his friends and more users come to you? So we here at uh, Immobilien Scout, we are using Comscore to measure. It's like Google Analytics, but not such an <coughs> expensive tool also. And you get a lot of data out of the, it. And we measure our success, for example, here for, for our mobile page. We track the visits and, and know, okay, your user on the platform, that is good. If would, this would drop down to zero, we have really a problem. And we should run and make all work to, to look what's going on. The second thing is we thought that um, on the mobile search platform, they can make contacts to, to realtors, which um, did... Um, maintain um, the, the object which you are showing. <coughs> they can contact them and, and say, oh yeah, I want to I'd like to visit this flat. And there we see a success rate. And if this also breaks down, we also see we have a problem that can, could be caused by everything. If we they put their new advertisement on the page and the people don't like it, they will click it away. Um, <coughs> they will put close the whole page. and then we know, ah, okay, at this time at point, all users are dropping. Why? What did we on this date? So we can check the application back and we can fix it. Yeah. That's the last point. Uh, we have now, I think, time for questions. And these are my Twitter account and my homepage. Have we a microphone? Did anybody have some question about the topics? <laughs> Very good. Hi. Um, Hello. Uh, do you use all the technologies on the Immobilien Scout page? Or so what, what kind of server do you have? Not on the core platform, and the core platform is really a legacy platform that has evolved into the last 15 years. It was started with a tiny JavaScript applica uh, Java application, and now it's a really huge Java application. But we have some teams in house, like the, the, the Austria page we are hosting, which is, this page is uh, whole written in, in AngularJS. But they, I think they are not using a Node.js on the us server. They are using a common server. And, and, but there are more and more teams that are interested in, in such a kind of application. And we in the search team, we also think we would like to change over to such kind of <coughs> application. But it's not so easy if you have this, because you have a lot of users, and they also expect that this behaves like the, like the old page. Yeah, okay, but, but you would like to change if you could easily. Yes, okay. and we have changed already some pages. Okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you mentioned uh, earlier about how you would separate the um, application server from your API server. Mm -hmm. um, 
What would be the main benefit of that? Like, why, why, what's the purpose of separating those two functions? Yeah, okay, you uh, separate uh, the whole information which you are you're doing, the, the data binding, the, the layering, and you can put a whole team only on, on making this data service available, and they can split up between two components. They doesn't e even really know about each other. They only provide data. So if, if you put them all together, you really end up with a huge application where it, it's, it needs uh, two, two weeks deployment cycles to put your stuff live because all things you have to put together and it, it could, um, we have experienced that with our legacy application to build them together that fits, fits all, it, it needs a one hour and that, that makes no fun because if you are committing and waiting one hour to see that all tests are passing, that you are bundled up your application, and then in the last, in the last minute it failed. You have to start over and figure out where's, where's the problem. It doesn't really make you fast. But if you have a separated system and you know you get data, you doesn't need to care about where the data comes from. You only need to, to know how it is structured. And what kind of tools would the API team be using? Can be everything. They can um, write um, uh, like um, there are um, databases which provides you um, really yeah um, overviewable uh, interfaces like the, the MongoDB it gives you only uh, it's no <coughs> uh, can I say. Um, yeah, you, I think you can also need, um, you know, can use your old application layer and, and put, it, put a new layer in front and they can reuse your, your old interfaces. And um, also if, you, if you're then going into a mobile strategy, you can have your, your apps also using the same API layer. Yeah, you can connect other applications oh, to okay. it and you can spread it out your data and hold it back on one place your data and the application can consume it. So you just have the single sources tools with your data and with the page and the app and like everything is using it. You can do it on the service. Yeah. Right. Thank you. One moment. So you didn't mention authentication frameworks. Uh, any comments on that? Yeah, you can do it on, on an extra server. You can jump to, to this authentication server and do the authentication. Do you have any recommendations concerning OAuth or OpenID stuff? We are using OAuth 2, but it's always a pain in the ass to use it. Because it's it's really really <laughs> Uh, yeah, there are uh, frameworks for that, they do this for you, they are open login mechanisms like Facebook providing and then Google are providing them, you can jump to them and only um, put the ID of this user in your database and so you can match this Google user back to your application or if you have to um, make it on your own, there are open source libraries. So, so you already jumped to OAuth 2, right? We are using OAuth 2 for our API. There are parts uh, inside of the API uh, which are free. You can access them with no account, like the search. If you want to search a building on a server point for real estate, you can get them for free now. It's one call in your browser or from your application, application over HTTP. But we have restricted information like then the, the tile information, the X to C. We won't really know where's the street and how much does it cost. Then you have to go out.
Any more questions? Yeah, hi. Uh, do you test your website with Selenium? And if yes, uh, how or which technology are you using? Uh, we are using the um, Team City continuous integration system. And this can trigger Selenium to start up and to run all the, the Java tests we have written for this. And, but we all see that you have to, to watch out that you don't write too much of them because they are really expensive. They, um, they need time to run. And if you have thousands of them, you, you don't want them anymore because you're waiting and still uh, want to go home, but they are still running. So you need to make uh, less as possible of them and do more of these other, other tests. Mostly you want to, to have really a lot of, of the unit tests because they are really fast and they only test small components. Um, the end-to-end -end test, you can have more, but the selenium I really would, would cut down to, to the minimum. So do you consider testing selenium, uh, do selenium test uh, using services like Source Labs or Source State? No, I don't think so. We, I, I know we use the Firefox instance and we use um, the headless implementation of it. So we can run it on a server where no X is start up, and we can do it on Linux systems. But I think that's all. OK, thank you. More questions? All right, then thank you very much. you're one of the speakers, you get our very special speaker bug. <laughs> you can take home and uh, enjoy. Oh, thank you. Um, we're going to have a small break. At 11, the next talk will begin. If you don't know what's going coming up next, at the registration desk there is an agenda, which you can take with you. And if you want to... And Martin is going to talk about CSS styling. It's a